This is Summer Todd's mystery show. She couldn't make it to host the show this week, so this is her son Austin filling in for her. And tonight, I will be discussing my experiences with the spirits of World War I soldiers in my early childhood and how it shaped my beliefs on the New World Order and, the, and current events. So, <clears throat> a few months back, I did an interview for The Wonderful World of Weirdness, which my mom hosted, and I talked about my paranormal experiences throughout my life. Um, the first paranormal experience I had was with the spirits of soldiers from the First World War, which, and, and what I believe to be past life memories, which were triggered when I walked into a, a YMCA, which was, that was a preschool my mom had enrolled me in back then, and I smelled chlorine from the swimming pool they had in there. So I think that was what triggered that. And, and after that, I felt the spirits of, of these soldiers from the First World War around me, the German soldiers, British soldiers, American soldiers, Russians, all the, all the soldiers from all the different armies involved in it. And they wanted me, they wanted me to try to, to try to understand the significance and the causes of the First World War. That was, that was the, on a less personal front, on a personal front, there was also, um, there was also the feeling that I had been with them in a past life. Now, I, I can't recall <clears throat> what army, what, what part I may have played in the war, you know, what army I may have fought with, or, or any, or where, where in World War I I may have fought. But I had images from the entire war, be it the, you know, the U-boats that stalked the icy waters of the North Atlantic, the mud-soaked trenches of Passchendaele and the Somme, you know, the ruins of Verdun on the Western Front, the, the freezing Carpathian Mountains of the Eastern Front, or, you know, the, the ice trenches up in the, the Italian and Swiss, well, not the Swiss, but the Italian Alps um, on the Italian Front. So it was, it was kind of like they were images from everywhere, but it felt like I had been a part of it. But mainly, that mainly their their spirits comforted me when I was, you know, in preschool away from my mom for the very first time to remind me that I had been through way worse, but I didn't remember exactly what it was. But tonight I'll touch on more of more of the. Uh, more the aspect of how it still affects us all globally you know not 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 so much the personal aspect <clears throat> now now i asked um i asked john a while back um if he thought that i should undergo past life regression hypnosis because it's something i'm it's something i've wrestled with for for many years on one end, I've been like, well, maybe it would be beneficial for me to remember a past life because um, I would understand more of more of why I was born into this life and and more things about more things about my current life, and it, it might help me understand some things about this life that I don't understand but on the other side of the coin you know being that there were so many memories of things like the first world war and then you know later on what appeared to be past life memories of the American Civil War which I also touched on in that first interview a while back um, in various other periods in history that weren't so great I, I was I was kind of like well maybe there's maybe there's old trauma lying dormant there that I shouldn't bring back up 
into this life. So I was wondering, you know, now now John's opinion on it was it's it's probably more beneficial for me to do artwork and music talking about historical events like that if it gives me a release as opposed to actually remembering the details of past life. You know, and he very well could be right because I'm I'm not I'm not sure exactly where to go in the, in the on the personal side of that. And, and I was wondering what your opinion of that might be. Oh, me? Um, I uh, I don't see any problem with it, to be honest with you. Uh, but I wouldn't go with the hypnosis, okay? Because um, hi- hypnosis can uh, create false memories. So Yeah. So you, you want to be careful there because you want those memories to be pure and authentic, okay? That's the yeah. Reason, that's the reason why people don't uh, get hypnotized and then uh, testify in court is because those those memories can be false memories, and they are. Yeah, yeah. They are. So my suggestion, instead of doing hypnosis, would would be get into meditation, learn how to get into deep meditation and learn how to do that and then freaking allow these images to come up from wherever they're at and do it that way it's a it's a natural process it's it's not something that's done through hypnosis or anything like like that you know what i mean so for me that's what i would do i would start getting into meditation and learning how to you know dive into your your thoughts and be able to pull those out things like that so that, that's what okay. i would do so so that that might that's that might be if i decide to go the avenue of being more specific and remembering my past my past life mm-hmm. and, and maybe other past lives that's probably that's the better the better route for me, the better yeah. route to go to have more more authentic memories and know for sure that that's what I'm actually remembering as opposed to what may be being suggested by a hypnotist. Well, it's it's not just the hypnotist, but like uh, um, you 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 have you have your your memories, and then you have what actually happened. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. <laughs> Now, what 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 you you've got a problem with with uh, hypnotism is hypnotism kind of uh, coagulates your imagination with with what really happened. You know what I mean? Like like you you could actually create a memory that never actually happened in your life. So, oh, okay. So so that's the reason why I'm saying it. And now with meditation. With meditation, what that does is that that pulls up a, a memory in your head that's authentic, and as long as you you're aware that that's what it is, then you can recognize it. So, um, okay, it's just uh, hypnotism is um, a lot of people try to push that stuff when it comes into like ufos and stuff like that like uh they they try to say well you know this person went in and got uh regressive hypnotism and stuff like that yeah yeah when they when they try to remember alien abductions and stuff exactly yeah yeah and and, but but if it's if it's just like suggestion or, or imagination you don't know for sure if it was what really happened Right. You know, I, yeah, I kind of see what you're saying. Yeah. That might. <clears throat> I'm not one of the people that jumps on the bandwagon when it comes to that. And like, I've I've been into uh, checking out all the stuff about UFOs for years now. You know what I mean? And I've actually, um, I've actually been curious about the hypnotism stuff because of stories that I've heard. And then I also went and I found out about uh, the legal aspects of hypnotism and and being a witness. You know what I mean? In yeah, like how it's not admissible in court and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I found out that that's the reason why they don't do it. And 
it, it makes perfect sense if you you're open-minded enough to understand that you know what I mean so I, I wouldn't suggest doing the hypnotism I would I would yeah. do, I would do the meditation I mean if if you can find people who are uh, trained in it you know what I mean and can actually guide you through it that'd even be better but you don't have to go that route okay you can actually okay yeah I mean it's yeah I mean it yeah, I, 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 yeah. If I decide to go that route, I'll, I'll definitely give give that start out by giving that a shot for sure. Yeah. But but again, you know, like I said, I'm I'm conflicted as to whether to try and remember more about the past lives because it doesn't seem like I think as much about those things when I write songs or do artwork about them. But at the same time, it seems like it could be beneficial to remember some, some of those lives, maybe to understand more about this life. But at the same, but but then you know you got I got possible, you know, trauma that I don't want to bring into this life and in, interfering with this life, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of, well, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of going back and forth on that. <laughs> from from every. <clears throat> From everything that I've I've heard heard so far, when it comes to your family, okay, I, the one thing that I pointed out to your mom is there's something there when it comes to you, your sister, your mom, her sister, and your grandma, okay, her mom. Okay, yeah. Um, and when when we started talking about Oxford and everything, that's that's what stuck out to me about that was because your grandmother I guess she had that vision there of the student that was supposed to be a ghost and and that started with her and then all of a sudden uh, your mom and her sister started having experiences you know what I mean so when I started hearing that when I started hearing that, what it made me think was maybe there's a connection there, something that's inherited down the line. So you, you might be experiencing a lot more than just, you know, traumatic memories going on in your head. Yeah. Yeah, I might be I might be experiencing more than than just traumatic memories from a past life. There's also other spirits that kind of hitched a ride due to abilities that I that I inherited. Yeah, I, I absolutely do believe that. Yeah. Um these <laughs> these these might not actually even be your memories. They could be something that's being given or given to you because what I'm discussing is mediumship. You kind know, of with being a medium you you don't have these powers. You're just a vessel, and these this information is being tr- transmitted through you. It's like like a power line. You know what I mean? Electricity travels yep. through the power line. But yeah, I, I, absolutely. You know what I mean? And that that's kind of like what the process is. Like you're actually a vessel where the information can be transmitted. So, so that that could explain why, that could explain why I'm seeing every, I was seeing every different aspect of the First World War, you know, from the North Atlantic to the Western Front to the Eastern Front mm-hmm. to the Italian Front, yeah, to you know, to the war in the air with all the, you know, I used to see the images of the biplanes and the the pilots, you know, all flying up. And a dog fighting each other, so I, I I saw every aspect of it. It's like there's a flood of information. Yep. But but so much so that it feels it could be so much so that it feels like I was there the one perhaps I wasn't. But but it's it's hard to say for sure. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Until I, that meditation will help you be able to determine stuff like that and you'll 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 be able to have an understanding of it i i don't i don't think blocking it out is is a good thing i mean no, oh no 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 i mean i mean old old uh, old john said i should i should release it through you know i should release it through artwork and music like i like i've been doing if that works for me yeah. He just, he, but but he said he didn't. 
he, he said it wasn't necess- it didn't necessarily matter if I if I remembered a past life, you know, of course saying that's the that's the case that it was a past life. Mm-hmm. You know. But but you know, that's something that's something I'll give a little more thought to, trying to actually remember the past life to understand this one better. You yeah. know, because I'm I'm big on big on remembering your history. You know, uh, <laughs> as and, you, as I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I would continue doing the artwork too. Like I would. Oh, oh yeah. I would. Yeah, they. Uh, that that's one thing they that's one thing they kind of instilled in me. These soul these spirits of these soldiers, and then other 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 spirits from different times in history that came to me you know as i got older um they wanted me to start doing artwork and music about history as i as i got more into that so so that's kind of that's kind of helped me (laughs) and i'm trying to i'm trying to tell the stories of these events as it were (laughs) now how detailed are these soldiers like did you get names no no I never really I never really got a there, there was only one name that kept coming to me um, and it was a it was of a British Royal Army corporal or maybe a colonel and he I and I think he was I want to say he <clears throat> I'm not 200% sure. It but it seems like he was killed maybe in the battle of the Somme or or perhaps um perhaps the battle of the Marne river. Um and at his it, he was either Corporal or Colonel Albert Ball. All right. So see that would be a place to start. Yeah, I mean Yes, yeah, so I'm not. I'm not sure he was, but this this guy was. He was in the. He was in the Royal Army, and I had some images of him marching through, through London with a big, uh, you know, a big in a big army parade. Not too, not too long before they, they steamed off across the English Channel to France to, you know, to go to the front and all that. And then you know there was some, like I said, there was a, a shit ton of other images, and 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 I feel a personal connection with some of, some of the soldiers and sailors and airmen from all the different, you know, countries that fought, but no, but that's the only name really that has come to me. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, none, none of the others seem to have names as much as they do. Just kind of just kind of their personal stake in it and how they felt about it. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. That may be something I'm, I'm, I'm just not opening myself to with me without realizing it. Uh, I, I don't know. Have you checked the name out? Tried to try to do a search on this, uh... this ball? Um, there was a... I actually did find an Albert Ball, and I think he was a... I wouldn't quote me on this. I'll need to do some more research, and then I'll post it on Discord uh-huh. for you. Um, I had a book about World War One, and they talked about some of the flying aces. Um, and I think there was a guy in the Royal Flying Corps, a, a British guy in the Royal Flying Corps named Albert Ball, who was a he was a British flying ace. But the one I was seeing was in the Royal Army, and he was a. He was a soldier down in the trenches. Yeah. He was a he was a rifleman, so it doesn't. I mean, I'm, there probably was another Albert Ball that was in the army. I mean, millions of men from all the different countries involved, you know, that served. So there's probably more than one Albert Ball. Yeah. But that was that was the only one that I was immediately able to find. I mean, you. To find out for sure, you probably have to uh, to go into the the British equivalent of the National Archives, I, I, you know, and, and then dig through their records. Well, I know a guy named Mark Edworthy. 
who's over in England, and he's pretty smart about stuff like that. So if you ever want to do that, I could have him try to find the links and everything for me and send yeah. them to you and get it set up to where you can do your own searches. I think that would okay. be I think that would be a positive thing for you to do. That, that would be that would be interesting to see what I what I wind up finding. You know. And and you know, I I was I was going to mention this later but cuz I didn't know if I was going to discuss this topic or not or not tonight for sure. I I was I was kind of on the fence going into it. Mm-hmm. But since I decided to discuss it, I keep getting the feeling that that John's related to somebody who fought in the First World War. But and they're trying to get through to me for some reason, but I don't know for sure. Again, I don't know for sure if that's the case or not. Yeah. I only recently started getting that feeling. I was I was gonna wait until around the time I decided to discuss this and, and I didn't know if I like I said, I didn't know if I was gonna discuss it tonight or not to mention it to him. But but I had a feeling he might be related to somebody who fought in the first world war too. Yeah. But there's a good chance because over there, man, they were right there. They were, yeah. You know what I mean? And like, there was, was, you know, when you look at it, the United States, you know, we, we didn't get involved. The war started in August of 1914. And then, and, you know, the U.S. was neutral right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. We we didn't even get involved till April 1917. And then, you know, we really didn't get into combat until like May of 1918. So we really got into it. Um, we really got into it heavily the last six months, you know, the last major campaigns of the war. Um, now, my, I had a great grandfather whose name was Hugh Jones. He fought, he fought in the army in the last major battle, the uh, New Sargon between September and November of 1918. Um, and he, he fought right along, I think he fought right alongside the, uh, the British and Commonwealth soldiers because he, he always talked in pretty high regard with them. Um, now, he, he survived that last major battle and then he was on his way back from the front as, after the war had ended and this train he was on was headed towards a railroad trestle. The Germans blew up just before they retreated, mm-hmm. and the train wrecked, obviously, and he broke his back. I mean... That's pretty rough. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough to... Uh, yeah. It's rough to, um, to survive, you know, the last major battle of the war and all that, and then... You're on your way home. You break your back in a train wreck, you know. Yeah, but he made he made it back home all right. But at, other than that, <laughs> but you know who knows? It, it's maybe maybe he was in the if, if John's related to somebody who fought in the First World War. Maybe maybe he was maybe whoever it was he was related to was part of that last major campaign. You know, small world. That would be a very, a very major synchronicity. But that you know, it could be a stretch. But at the same time, I, stranger things have happened. Yeah. So it's it's. <laughs> it, it, whenever, uh, whenever uh, I I see John, I'll I'll ask him for you about it because he's usually always busting my hump about stuff, wanting me to do stuff for him. So. Um, whenever I see him, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him if he had anybody that, or a, a, a grandparent, or maybe even a great uncle or something that could have. Yeah. You know, yeah. See if he had. Any yeah, I mean, because, because England, I mean, they were they were in it hot and heavy from the get go. So there there was almost not a family in England that you know, at that time that that wasn't affected in one way or another and and i'm sure that probably just about everybody there every family there is still still no still has you know 
relatives that were a part of it, you know. Mm-hmm. And same with World War II, you know. That that you know, major events like that 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 touched an entire an entire country for four years like that did, it would have to it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. But especially World War Two, they were getting the bombs and everything. They were right there on the edge of yep. France. So uh- yeah, they yeah, the the blitz came blitz came right to their doorstep. <laughs> yeah, so it's it, it was it was rough going for them, for sure, man. But yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll ask them for you and everything, and find out what's going on. Yeah, there. I mean, um, yeah, I mean it. It's a feeling I I kind of had, but I I want I was I was thinking about asking him just before I discussed it, but I decided to discuss it the last minute tonight, and and so I didn't have a chance to reach out to him before then, but but it's a feeling I get. I don't know for sure. It it, it could be just it could just be a hunch that that doesn't mean nothing, but. Dude, and that's kind of what I was talking about too. It's really good that I, I I get to talk to you about this stuff because I was in, in my interview with your mom. I was bringing that up about it being hereditary, and there there's something that that did happen with all of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Then, something. I'll go ahead. I I was. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you were gonna say more. Um. Yeah, some, something something occurred, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly exactly what it may have been. It's it's it seems like my grandma seeing that that ghost at that in that Miami University that seems to be the beginning of it. But then again, you know, the house the house that my mom grew up in was was haunted even before my grandma saw that too. So it's 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 hard to say exactly what it what it may have been for sure, and and my grandfather who served in World War II, um, he I I I believe he brought back spirits from the war in the Pacific with him because he was a he was a CB in the Navy, mm-hmm. and he was stationed in uh, Borneo and New Guinea, and and I think he brought I think he brought back the spirits of. Uh, you know, you know, Marines and 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 soldiers and and you know, and Japanese even I think followed him home because I felt them around him a lot when I was a really little kid. But I don't I don't know how aware of it he was. I, I mean, he would tell me World War Two stories and stuff, and I and I could really feel the history, but. I don't know how aware of, of that he actually was or not. He, he didn't talk too much about his beliefs on um, on anything spiritual. I know, I know he was really uh, he was really against religion at least for a time because I my great grandmother, his mom was really was really religious. But I don't. So she he had a good relation a good enough relationship with her, but it just. When he grew up, and it just wasn't religion, just wasn't for him. But I don't know exactly what he believed spiritually. Yeah. Now, when you say that you could feel these spirits around him, like that's one thing I I always do with your mom too. Like, kind of elaborate more on the whole feel thing. What do you mean by you felt these spirits around him? Like, kind of explain that a little bit more. Well, when I was a little kid, and 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 uh, me and my sister used to go over there, and he would tell us, you know, World War Two stories. You know, I would I would feel, I would have all these images of American aircraft carriers and the, the Japanese aircraft carriers. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, battling it out with each other. I'd, I'd see the planes shooting each other down. I'd see kamikaze attacks. Um, I would see Japanese soldiers hiding out, waiting for a marine for the marines to come on shore, um, and then just opening up on them. 
and I'd see the Marines getting down when they got opened up on, and, you know, just all manner of um, combat that you can imagine. You see, this is what I was talking about. Like, you said Phil, but right there you're having visions. See what I mean? Well, I could, well, I could feel, well, I could feel the... I could feel the history. I, I, I get. I don't know if I'm describing it to you quite. You're quite seeing. Accurate. You're seeing this stuff. You see what I mean? Like you're. Actually, yeah, yeah. That's a vision. And but I mean, at the same time, I felt. I did feel that they were. They were around him, and they were kind of sending these images to me. Okay. If that makes sense, so, yeah. so that, I guess that's I guess that could be what I would I would uh, mean by having felt it. So you, you could but, sense that they were actually there in the room. Yes, and, and I felt I felt like they were I felt like they were with me, kind of tell, sending me images of some of the major things that that happened, you know, and. And the, the weird, the weird thing about it was that the Japanese that followed my my grandfather home, they didn't really seem to, they didn't really seem to to have any any hatred or anything towards the American soldiers. That it just seemed like they all were there trying to convey the history. They they wanted me to to feel the history mm-hmm. and understand it, and then and then later on in life go on and go forth and tell it through again you know like the first world war soldiers kept telling me convey it through art and music you know talk to people about it to make sure it's it's remembered and it's it's impact is is remembered and so so I, that's what i mean by i felt it i mean i did see things too but i felt them with me telling me the story yeah that were, were trying to try tell me their stories. That's pretty good. Now, <laughs> when you when uh, when it comes down to it, what's what's the message that you think that you need to to pass on to everybody when it comes to the history? You know what I mean? Like, what is the history, and what message is it that you feel that you need to to share? Okay. Well. Oh, getting look. So that's that. So now we're getting back to the the original point. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I tended to I tended to ramble on about the the more personal aspect no, of that it. Was for... good. That was good. Don't don't think that. I mean that that was good. Oh. <laughs> that was good stuff. It, yeah, it definitely add to the it definitely add to the interview. So so getting back to the original point, I you know I spent years. Um, struggling to understand the root causes of the first world war and its significance and and for you know i i felt him kind of trying to tell me but it was like it was like it took me a while it just took me a long time to of to understand it and so so basically the root causes of it came down to you know economic military and industrial competition between you know two competing alliances and these alliances was were the central powers which was uh germany austro-hungary the austro-hungarian empire the ottoman empire um italy was one of the central powers they later switched over to the Allied side. Um, then the Allies were England, France, and Russia. And, and of course, all of England's colonies at that time, which were uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, what have you. Um, so that was that was the two major alliances. But power, it appears that power was had been consolidated into, into two major alliances that were competing with each other and then it over the years that it, it became a the tension formed a powder keg and the spark that lit it was when um a guy by the name of Gavrilo Princi he uh he shot the archduke um 
France for uh, Francis was it Franz or Francis Ferdinand um, in Vienna, Austria. That was on June twenty eighth, nineteen fourteen. And so that that was what that was the spark that lit the powder keg that became the the first world war. So so I came to understand the root causes of it, and it took me a little longer to understand the significance. So you know, long story short, the war after four years toppled four major empires, and those those empires were the German Empire, which was the Second Reich under the uh, the Kaisers, uh, the Hohenzollerns. Um, the other empire was the Russian Empire under the the Tsars, which was at that time ruled by the Romanovs. Um, and then you had the Ottoman Empire, which was toppled. You had the Austria, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Austria-Hungary, however you want to say it. That empire was toppled. So the significance, the the it appears like the power was consolidated. The old world order was, you know, all these these old royal families that royal ruled Europe. It appeared like somebody that it, I, it, that may have been in charge of these royal families made them start to consolidate the power. And then in, they created a, an event that wound up toppling this, this said old world order. And it, it left, well, it, it basically turned Europe into a power vacuum. You know, Europe was economically and socially devastated by the whole thing and and financially too and it left people it left people desperate so they they turned later on in their desperation their their post world war 1 desperation to to unfortunately to tyrants <laughs> and a whole series of them so that was that was basically the significance of the first world the root causes and the significance was it it toppled the the power was consolidated in the old world order and then the old world order was toppled by it one fell swoop was just knocked out and and nothing but devastation was left left in its place which left people desperate and so this this power vacuum as it was 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 filled by a whole series of tyrants with force going into the 30s. You know, you, you had you had Mussolini who came who came along in Europe. Um, uh, Francisco Franco. Um, you had the rise of fascism in Portugal, and then ultimately Adolf Hitler and the Nazis in Germany. And and they were they rose out of that. They rose out of all that anger and bitterness and desperation that was left behind, and then of course, the the principal fruit of the First World War was the Russian Revolution, where you know that left the communists in power in Russia, and that that shaped that was another major thing that shaped the history of the the 20th century, obviously. Yeah. So there was a whole, it left the door open for a new world order to rise. And then power was again consolidated leading up to the Second World War. And then they duped it out for who was going to control this new world order. And obviously the, the allies, the, the Americans and the, the Russians, and the, you know, the British won out. And so we've controlled the world since then, but but right now I, I don't know I don't know if they completed the the new world order as they wanted it then, um, or or if they they have they have more to to do. I mean, I mean it'd be interesting to hear your opinions on that, but but. But that that's basically the root causes was consolidation of power in the old world order, the the um, the significance of it was the toppling 
of the old world order and leaving a power vacuum in place to be filled by a new world order. And then that new world order duped it out within itself in World War II to determine who would control it. And then for now, you know, for now, you know, well, America controlled it until America and Russia both vied for control over it throughout the Cold War, War uh, throughout the Cold War. But I don't know if they ever established the New World Order exactly as they um, exactly as they wanted to, or if they're they're still they're still trying they're still trying to figure out another way by which to establish what they want i mean i'd be interested to hear your opinions on that because well, i know you're into con conspiracy theory kind of stuff like yeah. this yeah <laughs> and this is kind of where paranormal the interesting thing about this subject is kind of where paranormal you know meets the um it's kind of where it meets the conspiracy theory world it's kind of a line between the two now um with me, when it comes to World War One and World War Two, I believe that World War Two was actually just a continuation of World War One. Um, it was just unsettled business that needed to be taken care of. And, yeah, you know, there was. Um, now, when it comes to the New World Order, I, I believe that this is exactly what we're living in today. A lot of people don't understand how much has changed in the last 125 years. You know, um, this is like everything that a conspiracy theorist back in 1945 would have dreamed of. You know what I mean? Like, th this is, this, look at the, the world we live in where you freaking have a country that can tell you how high your grass is supposed to fucking be, you know what I mean? It's 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 insane when you look at that kind of stuff because back then they they, they wouldn't have tolerated that, you know. You have to have a drive you have to have a driver's license to drive a vehicle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the creeping Creeping incrementalism of, of governments cr encroaching more and more and more into people's lives mm -hmm. with every crisis they create. <laughs> Everything, you know. Um, and government control is just at an all-time high. I mean, when it, when it comes to how much control they actually have, and we've witnessed that in the last five, ten years, you know. Um, now, oh, yes, absolutely. Now, um, I, I did research on uh, socialism, and a lot of people had like this misconception that socialism started out of communism from Russia, and it was actually the other way around. Like, communism is a result of socialism, which, yeah, yeah. which, which started in France and Germany, of all places, you know. And where I get a lot of flack from a lot of people is when when we discuss the Nazis okay um, the Nazis weren't far right they were far left extremists yeah I mean they were the national socialist German workers party which socialism is a leftist ideology right <laughs> you know and uh, they they uh, eventually became fascist but the reason why fascism worked out was because uh, fascism learned how to freaking monopolize socialist programs. Okay. When you create yeah. monopolies out of a freaking socialist program, you become a fascist state. You know? And you had people like Krupp. Krupp. I don't know if you ever heard of him before. But, Krupp Steelworks? Yeah. He was the one that freaking yep. built the bombs for the Germans and stuff. Um, yeah, there was a uh, him and uh, there was a uh, Daimler Chrysler, mm -hmm. um, you know Volkswagen. All of them. Uh, yeah. You know there Volk, were many of them. The Volk. You ever hear of the Volk movement? What is it? It's called the Volk, the Volk movement. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yep yeah. 
that they were an actual movement that was a liberal party, believe it or not. They were freaking, they believed in blood and soil. You know what I mean? It was a, yeah, I think they took that out of uh, old uh, Otto von Bismarck speech. Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> no, actually, they were conservative, I think. Not, not liberal, they were more conservative. Which, back then, conservatism was liberal. But, um, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the lib liberalism's gotten more and more to the left over the decades. It's to where it's just like, to where it's like scary absurd now. <laughs> but, but see, you brought it in. <laughs> that, all that kind of sums up what I'm talking about. Like our perceptions have been altered, and the things that we believe now are false. The the majority oh, yeah. of it's not not true at all. And the, the reason why is because they've been setting up these structures. Okay. And, yeah. And the, in order for them to set these structures up, they have to alter your thinking and my thinking so that we think the way they want us to think. Not, not they have to. Go ahead. They have to condition us to not only accept but to celebrate their control. You know. Yeah. And that's kind of what Orwell warned us about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're we're slaves to our own vices too. You know, when you got. You got people who are freaking addicted to drugs and alcohol, and freaking they're okay with it. You know what I mean? And that's because ever since the beginning of freaking civilization, you know, man has always drank beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. What I mean? Yeah, he, that's very true. So, <laughs> so they've they've pretty much gotten us drunk gotten us high freaking turned us around made us to where we don't think straight and and we're slaves basically because all we all we do is work for freaking a paycheck you know what i mean i know that i know that feeling <laughs> you know? um you tell somebody to take time off for themselves so they can do something that they enjoy doing and they're like oh i don't have time for that i gotta work yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you're trying to tell me you can't freaking take time off for yourself to try to make your life a little better for yourself? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean it's I make I, I, I do everything I can to to make to make time, you know, for myself and the things I love and and you know, to get my message out because 'Cause I'm kind of an, an engaged in the fight against that, you know, as it were. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do, I think that the new world order is now. I, I don't think that it's going to happen. You know what I mean? 1984 was freaking over 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So you got to stop and think about that. Freaking 40 years ago, that's when the book said that it was supposed to happen. And it's been 40 years. So think about it. You know what I mean? Like. Have you ever heard of the book 1984? Yeah, yeah, by George Orwell. Right. I, when you said the book, I didn't know if you... Well, you did say 1984. Yeah. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you were referring to, to the, the book of Revelations. No. Because that, that was another... <laughs> yeah. But, that's another thing that, that ties that ties into it. That, that's what I thought you were referring to for a minute. But, but yeah, the... But yeah, I, I I think it's I think it is, it is, it is here among us. Yeah. Now, if and, they and, if they've got it fully the way they want it, I don't think so. Because if that was true, like you said, consolidated, the UN would be in full power. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they're and they're not quite. They're not yet. I mean, the the foundation for it's in place, but. They don't. They don't have it where they want to yet. So the the overall the overall message that they appear to be they all appear to be trying to warn me about was that, you know, the old world order got toppled in the first world war, and the clock started ticking on civilization with the with the with the first world war. It started ticking in 1914. And we've been on borrowed time ever since. And then, of course, you know, World War II wound. We ended World War II with weapons that can destroy 
you know, the entire, with nuclear weapons, it can destroy the entire planet in a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. Civilizations, we know it, you know. So, all it and all the events it set into motion got the clock ticking on us, set the ball rolling for the the New World Order, which, you know, we're, we're in now, and... and it's hard to say exactly what their next move will be, but that that appears to be what they're more or less, you know, warning me about. Oh, well, it's good that you're yeah. actually uh, perceptive to that because, I mean, th those are those are things that are important. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people don't even want to talk about it. It's and I, well, I mean, there's just go ahead. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, there's a lot of. There's a lot of people that just think, you know, oh, you're a stupid conspiracy theorist. That's all bullshit, you know. Don't 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 believe all that crazy stuff. You know, people people believe the book book of Revelations or they're Bible thumping maniacs and what you know. I've you know I've heard it all from you know over the years talking about <laughs> talking about it. So, <laughs> well, me, I I I I don't like. I'm not like all in on the conspiracy theorist thing. Like I actually like do stuff when it comes to like political history and p politics too. And I a lot a lot of people that I deal with is from different categories of life. Like there's Mark and Tan, you know what I mean? They're the freaking they're the hardcore realists kind of people you know what i mean uh well not really oh, yeah. but like uh they, they, they don't want to get caught up in conspiracies and paranormal and stuff like that but they're into stuff like tech and it all you know and things like that then i've got freaking john your mom i've got freaking bob dub all them and they're they're all into their stuff and then now there's Vince. He's he's into philosophy, and you know what I mean. So you got a lot of different aspects of things. And and for me personally, I I can't be held down by one group because if I am, then I'm gonna suffer in this area. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's very very good to keep your uh, your your horizons broadened mm -hmm. and. and Whenever I talk about anything, I try to I try to get as many subjects together. I try to talk about it in such a way to where I get as many subjects kind of melded together yeah. as possible. So I draw in people from all different um, different backgrounds because I'm into you know the things the things my mom and Bob Dub are into and that John are into um, you know other than conspiracy theories, politics kind of stuff. I'm into that too. I'm into the stuff that Vince is into, you know, the the uh, the psychedelic drugs kind of and philosophy kind of things uh -huh. that he's discussed. That's I, that interests me too, uh, um, you know. So I and then of course you know paranormal stuff. So I, I I make my my best effort to tie all those those things together the best I can without anchoring myself down too much to to one subject. My, I, I don't even try to mix them together. It's just they're they're amazing stories. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. When I first started, I was I was into writing, and the thing about being a good writer is is you've got to say one thing to yourself, and you'll be a great writer. And that's just one thing is all you got to say. It's and and what you got to say is I don't give a shit if it's freaking real. I don't give a shit if it's fake. It's a good story. I like it. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. Okay. Because I, I, I mean, I do creative writing and stuff. I never really, I mean, if I, I guess, I mean, I, do, I think of it that way with my music. You know, it's not how technical of a, of a guitar player or an instrumentalist or I, I am or anything. If, if I feel something in my heart, then it's, yeah, it's pure. It's good. You know. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to anchor myself to believing if something's true or not. You know what I mean? If if I freaking like the story and I want to freaking hear it, then I'm going to hear it. You know, and that's how I do things. I don't 
I don't care if freaking the person is freaking telling me a story that's real or if it's not. If I like the story, I'm going to freaking listen to it. You know what I mean? And that's and that's that open mindedness is and, and that open minded, uh, unanchored down approach is what makes you a great interviewer and a great listener. You know? Yeah. I, and that's that's. By the way, I wanted to remind you that this isn't an interview, man. You're like hosting a show and stuff. I'm just, I'm just your, <laughs> your sad kid. Well, well it's, it just became became more of a. I, I started talking about all my stuff, and then I, you know I'd ask your opinion, and right. we'd go back and forth, and, and then it became a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> Not so much right. an interview as a as a conversation between us i would say yeah because I, I you know anytime i talk to somebody i i always i always want to hear their you know their opinions on on think some of the things i'm talking about you know well you're like doing, that you're doing great and everything it's just when you said that i wanted to say hold on now you're hosting a show here <laughs> you're the host well, I'm the, well i've done i've done pretty good hosting it you know, yeah, you know as far as go, i've as far as telling out, laying out the story and the message, I'm I'm trying to con to convey. <laughs> yeah, we just we just tend to get into conversations, and then that's where it turns into sort of a <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of an interview. It's pretty good. I really like it. I like I like it, what you had to say so far. You know, and like uh, when it comes to uh, all that, when what we were just talking about you know on the the story and being open open minded the last step that i have to make is listening to things i don't want to hear you know what i mean so that's yeah that's the trick that's yeah what, that's <laughs> that's the hard part you know what i mean but i'm getting better at it and i think that's where you strive to be better at what you're doing not 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 just listening to the stories that you like but try to listen to the stories that you don't like too because then you can kind of have more of an open mind it, yeah yeah absolutely because think about it like this even though you don't agree with it you can tell somebody well i did listen to it and i i do know what they're saying you know what i mean so i i do yeah that too yeah so that and that that helps that, that helps them see things you know that helps them feel more connected to you without you know feeling like you just you know pushed your views down their throats and you know right and then well I, so that 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 yeah i i learned that too i learned that the hard way like they i i had to learn like you, you don't you don't force your beliefs on other people you know just kind of it's in your actions you know what i mean people people will notice the way you act and that's what's going to influence a person it's not going to be the nice cool speeches that you give them you know don't. it's going to be you know just as much body body language and you know facial expressions and and the you know the way the way you really come across to them and um mm -hmm. In other and conveying in, in conveying your points, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, everybody's everybody's open to their opinions on you know what, what I've what I've conveyed here uh, tonight, and and to and the uh, the the message I'm going to continue to convey that I, you know through my art and music going forward, uh, you know, and and some. Some people, some people's opinions of, of things, they, they won't be exactly what I've personally experienced or seen, or you know. But I'm not gonna hate them for as long as they don't hate me for mine. You know, All that's right. you know that's the best way to go about it. Because you know the powers that be that I'm that I've been discussing, you know, they seek to divide people. And right. that's one of the good things about this community. We can come together with a lot of these different interests. You know, the artwork. And the parrot that, that I do, and you know that others could can you know may contribute to it down the road. The artwork, the music, what have you, uh, the paranormal conspiracy theories, um, stuff, uh, the history, things like that. 
that's that's those are the things that, you know I think bring us together. I and it's, I, it, I was actually impressed because here lately I don't know if you noticed or not, but John's getting more into the conspiracy stuff too now, and he used to never do that. I was like he just now started doing it. I think I think uh, Michael Paul really woke him up on a lot of that stuff. You know what I mean? Because like that water into wine uh yeah i've yeah that's a that's that's a really good uh that's a really good series that this and yeah that's 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 absolutely awesome so that's kind of that's kind of pulled john more into the more into the direction of uh of um dark things and gins and me and you and so yeah so to speak yeah (laughs) Now, now with me tonight, my it was kind of, it's it's kind of where, what I've discussed is more where the paranormal meets it. Yeah. So it was kind of kind of had a bit of something for John and you, you know, both. <laughs> now with with me on the spiritual side of it, I think uh, when it comes to all that, um, there there there's a lot more material aspects to it than the spiritual you know what i mean because like uh like you're you're talking about old empires that were were taken out one right after the other so there was a lot going on there when it comes to socialism and uh you know i i never finished that point but the thing of it is i think that there was a movement that was taking place at the time started by Karl Marx and yep. the world war happened because they wanted to take out these old empires you know what I mean they wanted oh to yeah the, take, taking out the old world order was absolutely the the end game you know. that was knocking those empires down like they did was absolutely and then, of course, out of the movement from Karl Marx, they got the the Russian Revolution and communism. communism. That was one of the things. That was one of the things the uh, those soldiers those soldiers from the First World War wanted me to understand was how that how that shaped every conflict throughout the 20th century. Yeah. And, and so, it, when I felt spirits around me from World War II, like I was discussing earlier. And then I had an uncle who came home from Vietnam. I felt soldiers around him from Vietnam. The message seemed to be the same. They were they were all kind of telling me how everything started. The world we're in now started there. That was kind of because you know if, if if World War One had never happened, history obviously would be drastically different. That that goes without saying. Hmm. It was just too major of an event. <laughs> you know so. That seemed to be the message they're conveying, and, and it's it's hard to tell exactly where they're trying to tell me it's it's all leading. I, you know, I know that that I, I do think we're we're getting towards the end of of time as we know it and understand it. Yeah. But I don't know what that's when, when that day comes when when time and and the world as we know it and understand it comes to an end. I don't know exactly. It's impossible for me to say exactly what that's going to look like. You know, I, I, I've, I've, I've went back and forth in my head a lot, a lot about that. Uh, I've been like, you know, am I gonna, am I gonna wake up one morning and be in a to- totally different dimension and I'm unable to understand, or one that's beautiful beyond understanding and and. I'll forget about the world I once lived in, or or is it going to be more of a gradual thing? Because I, I I think I think we that's another thing. And now this is on the more, the brighter side of it. This is on the more positive side of the message. You know, it's not all gloom and doom, global dictatorship and war and all that. There there is at some point when they start trying to push the the division and the war and poverty and slavery on us hard enough some point our soul the human soul the god consciousness whatever you want you want to call it will will start to wake up and come together 
you know, I, I, I get the feeling that may be kind of what's going on with this community here. Mm -hmm. You know, this this may be part of that uh, that great awakening. We're awakening. We're waking up to you know to to this. But but when we're fully awakened, if that's what's going on here for sure, if we're, when we're fully awakened, it's impossible for me to say exactly what that's going to look like or, or what it would mean for us, as opposed to you know what all of our conditions mean for us now it's so so there'll be a new world order where the evil and tyranny tries to take over but there'll be an awakening and kind of a counteract uh, you know uh, uh, push back against it a great awakening but what that looks the, the other the, the new world order that's good I don't know what that one looks like as opposed to the the darker evil one that's something I'm still, you know, struggling to kind of grasp. I know something of that of, the, of that sort appears to be going on, but but you know, that's that's my take on it. Well, that that would be perfect for ending the show. We're at like an hour and six minutes, so you, okay. you did a great job, man. Oh um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah I can um, I can do. I can try to think over that, you know, next time, and I can do probably an entire, an entire show, maybe on the Great Awakening, or maybe a roundtable event. We can maybe do a roundtable event of that sort or something. Now, I, I'm not. This isn't my show, but I, I wanted to ask you on my, on my channel, would you be willing to still do an interview and everything? Because freaking, I, I've, I've been wanting to talk to you more about that. I. We have yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do. I'll do an interview. Yeah, we'll we'll set up a time. We'll set up a time, and I can do an, an interview. Because as soon as we're able. I already got one with your mom and everything, but I want to be able to get an interview with you for my channel. Apart from uh, Wonderful World of Weirdness on my channel, which is uh, Strange Stories. So. Uh, okay, is that is, is that the one I'm already subscribed to? Because I'm subscribed to the yeah. uh, Roger Hansen yeah. channel. Yeah. I'm, okay. Strange. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, strange stories. Is what what? It, you, you, I'm pretty sure you're on there. If you're not, I know your mom is. So. Okay. Can... Yeah, I was just making sure that was a channel I was subscribed to because I I did subscribe to your channel a while back. All right. So. And uh, you, if if. This is this is the goal part. This is where you have to end the show. So yeah, we're gonna see how good you are at ending. Because okay, well, what do I need to do in ending the show? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta thank people for watching. Oh, okay. <laughs> and stuff like that. It's 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 just. Serious. All right, all right. I got I got an idea of what to say. <laughs> That's, thank you for pointing me in the right direction. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> all right. All right, this has been Summer Todd's Mystery Show. This was her son, Austin Todd, filling in for her this week. Um, thank you all for watching. I look forward to hearing, to hearing all your feedback about this week's episode. And until next time, take it easy, and God bless.